to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ every good and every perfect gift comes down from above from the father of lights with whom there is no shadow or variation of turning. James chapter 1, verse number 17. We welcome you today to our study of our amazing God and His awesome peace. Today we're considering how that the peace of God is such a wonderful blessing of having God in one's life. And so we're so glad that you've joined us for our study together today. Uh, if you haven't already, we want to encourage you to locate your Bible, have it ready, as we're going to look to the Word of God as our source of comfort and peace today. Today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Churches of Christ. The Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether it be on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night for Bible study, you will find people in the Lord's Church who love God, who love the Bible, and who are concerned about the souls of men and women. In fact, if you've got a, a Bible question, maybe you've been thinking about salvation or the church or what must I do to be saved or a, a variety of different questions. Friend, the members of the Lord's Church in your area would love to sit down with you, open up the Bible, and just simply study the Word of God. Here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd also like to help you in your desire to know God better, we encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. All of our video and audio lessons, written transcripts, study questions are available on our website free of charge. You can download or utilize them anytime. And if you'd like to have a copy of this lesson or any of our previous lessons on a wide variety of subjects, just go to our website, Fill out a media request form. You can receive a, instantaneously a digital download, or if you need it on DVD or CD, we'd be happy to mail that to you as well. And friend, we want to encourage you as well. In our fast-paced world today, check out the Gospel of Christ app on the Android and Apple Store. You'll find that there. It's a great way to study the Word of God in our fast-paced world today. Today we're thinking about our amazing God and His awesome peace. I want you to think about the, the joy of a person having peace in his life, the, the absence of drama, no fighting, not having to fret over problems, being able to relax and rest and enjoy life. Friend, those are things that you just can't hardly begin, are invaluable that you wouldn't replace for anything. Well, the peace of God is even greater than that. We have the peace of God, Paul said, which surpasses all understanding. Philippians 4, verses 6 through 9. Your mind can't even hardly begin to fathom how great God's peace is. Let's consider this peace for just a moment. When we say the, the peace of God, what exactly are we talking about? Well, friend, let's realize that peace stems from God and comes from God because He is the author. He's the source of all peace. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33 says, God is not the author of confusion, but He's the author of peace. And so the absence of discord, uh, tranquility in one's life, where is the source of that? It comes from God. Romans 15, 33, Romans chapter 16, verse 20, the God of peace is the idea. But friend, realize this as well. When we talk about the peace of God, we want you to understand that the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who delivers that peace as well. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, Jesus is referred to as wonderful counselor, mighty God. Listen to this phrase, Prince of Peace. He is the king, the prince 
of peace. He's the one who distributes that to God's people. And what a great title that is for our Lord and Savior. And so peace comes through God. Peace comes through having Christ in one's life. But you know, when you think about this peace, I want you to realize as well that real peace requires effort. I want to read to you a passage in James chapter 3, verse number 18, that helps us realize that peace is not something that just kind of happens. It requires effort and work on our part. Listen to James chapter 3, verse number 18. The Bible says, Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace, watch this, by those who make Peace. Peace doesn't just happen. It's not like the process of osmosis where you just kind of, whoa, I've got peace and that just happened. No, that's not the idea. Peace is made. There's that, that, that spiritual separation between God and man. God is holy, righteous, cannot look at sin. 1 Peter 1 15, Luke 11 44, Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 12. Man, who is of the cannibal age, has sinned, has fallen short, and has become separated from God. Romans 3 verse 10, Isaiah 59 1 and 2, and, and God can't have anything to do with that. There is going to be effort. You have to make peace, and that peace is ultimately made at the cross of Jesus Christ and in obedience to the gospel. And so when we talk about peace, we're talking about effort that is required by God and by man to gain that peace. Friend, here's a beautiful idea. Luke 1 verse 79, Jesus is referred to as the way of peace. If, a, if there's a road, if there's a path, if there is a direction, one has to go down to receive peace. Friend, that road starts with Jesus. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Jesus, my friend, I will assure you, is the way of peace. You cannot have peace in your life outside of Jesus Christ. In fact, Jesus himself preached peace. Ephesians 2, verse 17, Acts 10, verse 36, they were preaching peace in Jesus Christ. What is it that brings God and man together? What is it that removes the problem, the, the, the conflict that sin causes? And that's the message of Jesus and his hope. In fact, did you know that the Christian way is the way of peace? Listen to these words. I want you to listen to Romans chapter 3, and I want you to hear how this, the Christian way, is described as the way of peace. Let's begin in verse number 16. Destruction and misery are in their ways, listen to this now, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Well, what is that way of peace Paul is talking about all throughout Romans? It's the good news of Jesus Christ. And so the, the, the way of peace people haven't known, but you can know it, and it only comes through Jesus Christ. And friend, the, the good news, it's the gospel of peace. Ephesians 6 verse 17, we have shod our feet, Paul says, with the preparation, listen to this phraseology, of the gospel of peace. The good news, Jesus died for man. He can bring you back to God. He can remove every sin and give you a life of meaning and purpose. That's the good news, the gospel of peace that we preach. And so those are some elements that are necessary, some things that are required in peace. But as we think about what it really is, friend, think of it this way. Peace is a bond or an agreement between man and God. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3, we are to strive to keep the unity of the spirit, spiritual unity, listen to this now, in the bond of peace. That bond, that, that, that contract, that agreement or covenant is the new covenant of Jesus Christ. It's what brings man and God together. You see, when you think about a bond or an agreement or a contract, God has made that with us. God has promised to remove all our sin to those who are in Christ. If I'm in Christ, I've found peace because I've accessed that bond or agreement that God has given. Peace also, as we've mentioned, is the absence 
of conflict. I want you to listen to this verse in Acts chapter 10. Uh, notice with me in Acts chapter 10, verse number 34, this idea of peace being the absence of conflict. The Bible says, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth I perceive God shows no partiality, but in every nation whoever fears Him and works righteousness is accepted by God. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, He is Lord of all. And Peter goes on to tell that peace is available to everyone. We can have that, 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 that absence of conflict between God and man that sin brings. That's what peace is, is it removes that conflict in my life. Friend, peace is also a state of calm. Uh, let me give you probably the clearest example of that. Mark chapter 4, Jesus sends His disciples ahead of Him on the Sea of Galilee, knowing that the storm's going to come and the disciples are going to become very afraid. And so that storm does come. The disciples are, are, are afraid. On one account, he goes ahead of them. On another account, he's in the boat with them. And they wake Jesus up. In this account, they wake Jesus up and they say, Lord, do you, do you not care that we're about to perish? You can imagine what's going on. Water's coming in the boat. The waves are coming in. They're trying to bail water, but they can't bail it fast enough. They're about to drown. They wake Jesus up and say, Master, do you not care that we're about to perish? We're about to die here. Wake up. And Jesus gets up and he says these words, Peace, be still. And the Bible tells us there was a great calm on the sea. Friend, what's that whole lesson all about? That lesson is not about uh, people about to drown. It's not about Jesus really even saving the disciples from drowning. That lesson is, if I've got Jesus in my life and I'll access His power, whatever storm there may be, Jesus can bring calm to my life during it. Friend, that's the idea. The greatest storm is sin, and Jesus helps us in that storm. Now let's ask this question. If our amazing God offers us His awesome peace, how is that peace obtained? How do you get peace? Well, friend, the good news is, Peace is available to everybody. Luke 2 verse 14, the angels proclaimed peace at the coming of Jesus, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. My peace I give you, Jesus said in John 14 verse 27. He gave that to the whole world. And so everybody, regardless of where you live, Regardless of, of social status, regardless of gender, regardless of financial status, anybody who will submit to God's will can have the peace that's found in Jesus Christ. And friend, I want you to know that Jesus Himself is the, he's the epitome and He is the embodiment of what real peace is. It, you will never have peace until you have Jesus in your life. Listen to John chapter 16. I want you to hear what Jesus said to His disciples in verse number 33 of this chapter. Jesus says this, These things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Now listen, in the world you'll have trouble. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Here we've got the contrast. If you're in the world and the world is your focus, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have conflict. In me, Jesus said, you can have peace. And so we're already beginning to see the importance of being in Jesus Christ. Friend, as we think about peace and how that is obtained, it's good to know it's available to everybody. It's wonderful to be reminded that Jesus is the embodiment of that peace. But friend, if there is a moment in time, an exact moment in time when peace occurred, where was it? I want you to notice Colossians chapter 2, verse number 14 with me. The Bible teaches us that the exact moment in time when peace became a present reality, not a future promise, but a present reality for all men and women, it was at the cross. Listen to Colossians 2.14. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, He's taken it out of the way, having nailed it 
to the cross. Now listen to these words as well in Ephesians 2 verse 14. He himself is our peace who's made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create one new man from the two, thus making peace, that he might reconcile them both to God in one body, here it is, through the cross. Both verses, Colossians 2.14 and Ephesians 2.14 and 15 tell us that peace was made at the cross, that, that moment in time when every prophecy came to a climax, that moment in time when the greatest gift ever given was made available, when the blood of Jesus flowed down from Calvary and men and women had access as a present reality to God's salvation, that, my friend, is when real peace became available. You know, oftentimes when we talk about peace, People maybe think about the absence of, of, of war in this world. Maybe a person thinks about the peace sign. Maybe you think about the, the hippie generation and the peace movement that went on there. All those things may in some ways give an idea of peace. But for in real peace between God and man, that was only made at the cross of Jesus Christ. Peace can come to those who love God. Psalm 119, 165, perfect peace is available to those who love God's law. You want to have peace? Do what the Bible says. Try your best to live a life according to God's will. And did you know that faith in the Bible, real faith, talking about obedient trust in God that causes me to want to uh, uh, live a life where I put God and His will before mine, that's going to bring peace. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. I want you to listen to these words as Paul ties in faith and peace. Paul says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, listen to this, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Faith, putting faith into action, that brings real peace in my life. When I have forgiveness, I have peace. Luke chapter 7 verse 50, they found forgiveness and they found peace. And friend, peace and joy only comes after one's converted to the gospel. Acts chapter 8 verse 41, so that the Bible says the Ethiopian eunuch went on his way rejoicing after he had been immersed into Christ. Why? Because he knew that there was no more conflict. There was, there was no more separation between him and God that he could lay down. When the Ethiopian eunuch went back home to Ethiopia, he laid down on his pillow that night. There was a, something different about that man. There was a sense of spiritual calm that embodied him because he knew all is well with my God and with my soul. Well, once then we have received that peace, once one has obeyed the gospel and become a Christian, is there anything I've got to do to maintain peace in my life? What do I have to do to keep that peace as a constant part of my life? Well, friend, I want you to realize that real peace is a, it, it's not just a, a moment in time only action. Real peace is a lifelong pursuit. Listen to the words of Romans chapter 14, verse number 19. The Bible says in Romans 14, verse number 19, watch this, listen to this idea. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. P peace is a pursuit. It is a lifelong pursuit where I've got to strive after the things, God's things, the fruit of the Spirit, the Christian teaching, loving God and loving one another, I've got to pursue those every day of my life if I want to maintain peace. You know, conflict happens, problems happen, drama arises when I stop pursuing God's things. When I let myself, when I let the world, when I let temptation and lust get in the way, peace goes out the window. Problems come in. Fights come in, difficulties come in when I stop walking the Christian road like I ought to walk it. Being spiritually minded 
is also a big part of having peace in my life. Listen, listen again to what Paul says in Romans chapter 8 about the importance of being spiritually minded to have peace. Romans 8 verse 6, Paul says this, For to be carnally minded, worldly minded is death. Now listen to this, But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. How do you maintain peace? Not only do you have to pursue it, chase after it every day, but you got to have a spiritual mindset, meaning I want to think on the things that are good, holy, just, right, Philippians 4, 6 through 8. I want to set my mind on things above, Colossians 3, verses 1 through 3. I want to have the mind of Christ. All to be worldly minded, you can have a lot of problems with that. But if you want peace, you've got to be spiritually minded and pursue God's things. How else do you maintain peace in your life? This is a big one, friend. If you're going to maintain peace, you've got to learn to overcome the problem of worry. I want you to watch the correlation here between anxiety and the absence of it and peace. Listen to Philippians chapter 4 and how it talks to us about overcoming anxiety and having peace. Philippians 4, listen to verses 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing. There's the absence of worry. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now watch what happens next. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. If I can learn to let go of my anxiety, if I can learn to put worry behind me, you see, God's going to take care of His own, right? Matthew 6, verses 22 through 33, food, shelter, clothing, all these things God's going to provide if we seek first the kingdom. If I can learn to trust God, and let go of worry and anxiety. Then notice what happens. The peace of God rules my heart. You know, being obedient to God also helps us maintain peace. Just two verses later in Philippians 4 verse 9, Paul says this, The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Paul in essence says, if you want the peace of God, you've got to have the God of peace in your life. And to have the God of peace in your life, things you learned and heard and received and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace be with you. Friend, if a person's going to have the peace of God and the God of peace in his life, you've got to follow his teaching. It isn't enough to just say, I'm a Christian. It isn't enough just to, on occasion act like, dress like, talk like, do some Christian things. Those who really have the God of peace and the peace of God are striving, are pursuing, are chasing holiness every day of their life. They're trying to the best of their ability to do what God wants them to do. Did you know that putting the kingdom first also brings peace in our life? Romans 14 verse 17, the kingdom is where God's peace is found. And if I'm seeking first the kingdom, Matthew 6, then I can have peace that is hardly, be, hardly something we can imagine. Uh, doing good in this life helps us to keep peace. Romans 2, 2 verse 10, to those who do good, peace is one of the things that is offered to them. Helping those who are in need, reaching out to those who are outside the body of Christ, trying to be a good example, trying to show the love of God in every way, Friend, that helps us to have a content, peaceful, and happy life. Now, there is one final warning that we want to offer, and I hope you'll listen real carefully to this. The Bible clearly teaches there is a, a class or a group of people who will never have peace. I want you to hear the words of Isaiah chapter 48. There is one class or one group of people that the Bible clearly says will never have peace if they remain in that condition. Isaiah chapter 48. I want you to listen to what the Scripture says in verse number 22. Just a very simple statement. The Bible says, There is no peace, 
says the Lord, for the wicked. Wicked people, those who don't obey God, those who follow after the world, those who live a life of sin and wickedness and immorality, you'll never find peace. They're always chasing some lust or some pleasure or some passion, hoping that will give their life meaning and purpose and, and some sense of happiness. You'll never find it that way. You can't find peace in Satan and sin in the world. There is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. For those who are God's children, though, there is perfect peace. We can have peace that surpasses all understanding. Philippians 4, verse number 7. And so we ask you today, as we have thought about our awesome God and His amazing peace, friend, we ask you, do you have the peace of God? Do you have the God of peace in your life? Have you submitted your life to the will of God? Have you heard the message about Jesus, that He is the way, the truth, and the life? that no man comes to the Father except by Him, John 14, 6. Have you believed that? Have you committed to that with your life? Uh, John 8, verse 24, Jesus said, Unless you believe that I'm He, you'll surely die in your sins. Have you turned from what makes conflict between God and man? Sin. Luke chapter 13, verse 3, Jesus said, Unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. And friend, to have every sin washed away. Have you confessed the name of Jesus, Matthew 10, 32 and 33, and have you been immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins? Here's what Saul was told by Ananias. When Saul is in great conflict of heart and he needs to know what he's got to do to be saved, Ananias comes to him and says, Saul, Saul, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sin. There's that peace. Wash away your sins, Acts 22, 16. Friend, if that peace is not yours, we urge you to obey the gospel today and join us next time as we study more about our amazing God. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.